Hello Internet, my name is Jason and you're watching A Year in a Kilt. I made the decision sometime last summer in Nepal, played around with the idea that uh, I'm going to spend every day in 2018 in a kilt. Uh, thus far I've been successful. It is uh, January the 6th and I've been kilted uh, every single day. Uh, I'm going to go into a little bit about me this week and uh, who I am, my experience with kilts, what I do, that sort of thing. And I'm just sort of throwing this out there uh, to document the process, see what I've learned by the end of it so I can go back and watch the footage, and maybe someone will find it interesting too. You never know. Uh, so I am a college professor, hence the, the name uh, The Kilted Professor. I do ask if you recognize me or know me and you've stumbled across this channel, uh, please leave my institution uh, out of the comments or institutions that I've taught at uh, as I'm contract and this is my personal life and I would like to try to keep the two separate to some extent. Um, yeah, this is also a little weird as I'm talking to a camera. I'm used to normally talking to a room full of students. That does change things a fair bit. It's, uh, it's kind of unsettling. Uh, have found for any of you out there who are thinking about doing something similar, uh, it's easier when you minimize the, the recording of the video capture so you don't see yourself in real time and you're not aware of all the weird little movements and stuff that you do. Uh, so to start things off today, I am wearing the black Stuart kilt. Uh, this is one of my, well, Stuart tartans are, are my favorite tartans. Um, and my, my uh, go-to day sporin, which is a uh, lion rampant on black, uh, provided by uh, Wyvern Leatherworks, or acquired through, I should say, Wyvern Leatherworks, because I ordered it and paid for it. They did not give it to me. Um, if you're ever in the Sporin market and want a nice Sporin, or uh, they have Celtic-themed backpacks and all kinds of leather working things, go check them out. I'll throw a link down below in the, uh, the box afterwards. So, all that fun stuff out of the way. Uh, I first got into kilts, I guess it was technically uh, when I was about 17, I'm 37 now, uh, so 20 years ago, I, I made a, a great kilt. I went out and I got a bunch of fabric, uh, 5 yards wide by 15 feet, or 5 yards, 5 feet wide by 15 feet long. Uh, and because it wasn't uh, wool or anything like that, it was uh, polyester. I hemmed the edges uh, so it wouldn't fray. I don't have to worry about that with wool instantly, uh, but non-wool wool materials might make sense to, to hem the edges, which is, isn't normally done in a great kilt. Um, so I got out, or I got, got that stuff together, uh, made that, and uh, I hemmed it by hand. It took 60 hours, uh, roughly. A lot of work but a lot of fun and I learned a lot and sewing uh, that much cloth by hand on uh, all four sides my sewing skills got pretty damn good in the process uh, so I always uh, wanted a kilt to wear you know more formally full-time uh, sort of thing after that well not necessarily full-time that didn't really enter my thought process, but I, I always thought kilts were awesome. Uh, and my, my family has, we've got lots of Scottish ancestry. Uh, my mom and my grandparents were always very proud of our Scottish ancestry. Uh, my grandmother used to say she was three quarters Scots and one quarter English, which is fairly accurate. Um, so that brings us to early last year and the events that sort of culminated into now, hey, I want to try this kilt the full-time thing because it's awesome. Uh, I went to a, attended a friend's wedding in August, and uh, as we we're sort of getting ready to the wedding, I was just attending. I was I DJed on the stage a little bit, but uh, I was just an attendee for the most part. Um, I saw it as a great opportunity to to get a nice kilt, uh, as I did not have a nice formal suit that I wanted to wear. Uh, so I went to a, a shop in town, uh, William Glenn and Son, it was 
Uh, they're in town. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, incidentally. Um, I was uh, measured in shop and fitted for uh, for a kilt, and uh, was made in Scotland. So they shipped the, the measurements over or sent the measurements to their kilt maker in Scotland, and it took say eight to ten weeks. I think it was about eight weeks uh, for it to come in, and uh, I, I loved it. I loved the whole experience uh, you know, from the ground up. As soon as I put it on, even when they were trying uh, their rental kilts on in the shop to get an idea on how things hung and whatnot um, and sat, because kilts are tricky garments. You need a couple measurements to make one that will fit properly. Uh, usually the, the waist, the hips, and then the, the fell or the length. I believe it's called the belt. Um, it was a great experience, and I got an awesome garment out of it. And I liked wearing it so much, uh, particularly to an outdoor wedding in August. Uh, at least the service was outdoor. Um, then I decided I wanted to do this every day. So that's that's how I sort of wound up here. I, I acquired a collection of kilts, uh, and I'm still acquiring more. I have a few coming in from uh, from USA Kilts now. Uh, this particular one I'm wearing is the Black Stewart, and I think I already said that. Uh, I acquired this from USA Kilts. It's uh, one of their street kilt lines. It's a casual kilt, uh, eight yard poly viscose. Uh, runs you about $160 after tax, which isn't too bad. Uh, I have a variety of, of these style kilts. I've got a uh, the Black Stewart that I'm wearing, a uh, Royal Stewart, uh, Scottish National. Heritage of Scotland, uh, Black Watch. Is that it? I think that's it. Um, I also have a Gordon five yard poly viscose uh, casual kilt from USA Kilts, and the Gordon Modern Tartan. And I've got two more on the way. Uh, I have a, a Douglas that should be arriving this week, uh, Douglas Modern and a Stuart Hunting that should be arriving down the road at some point uh, when they get the material in. And what else? Got a couple I'm sure I'm forgetting. And more on the list to come. Oh, and uh, of course my good formal kilt, which is a, uh, a Black Watch Modern uh, in the brighter colors. I always liked the Black Watch Tartan and my great grandfather fought for the Black Watch uh, in uh, World War One, or fought with the Black Watch in World War One. Uh, I did some ancestry research this summer. Discovered he survived the Battle of the Somme in the in a kilt in his mid thirties. That's kind of cool. Um, learned a lot of other cool things with the the ancestry research as well. If you ever uh, feel like poking around and, and digging up some stuff and have the time to commit, because it took a lot of time, um, sign up to, to ancestry. Especially if you're going to go all around to, to any other country, uh, sign up for the worldwide or the, the pirate package that gives you access to worldwide records. And that's what I did. Learned a lot of cool stuff. Um, it was fun. Uh, so, so far this week, I have worn a kilt every single day, including to our faculty meeting uh, last Tuesday or whatever the hell it was. Um, I will be wearing a kilt to teach this entire semester, so that should be interesting. That's going to be a new element that's thrown in. Uh, when I started uh, acquiring more casual kilts uh, you know, through August and September, I started wearing kilts pretty much every day uh, when I wasn't in class. And I'd wear pants to go to class, but then I'd come home and change out of those and change into a kilt. Uh, can't think of anything else to, to really talk about today. Um, I'm not doing this as part of a dare railing. This is just something I felt like doing. And I wanted to throw that in. Um, I'm going to throw some links down below to some additional resources. And I will see you all next week in next week's video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day.